Hi, I'm Abubakar Siddiq Ango, Developer Evangelism Program Manager at GitLab. And in this session, I'll be sharing with you how you can improve the impact of your diversity initiatives in Africa. A little bit about myself, I'm a Nigerian based currently in the Netherlands, and I'm, my interests include Kubernetes, CICD, GitOps, and DevSecOps. You can find me on Twitter at Surkey247. I'm also a community organizer. One of my recent uh, activities include leading the organization of the Kubernetes Community Days Africa. Now, let's proceed first to learn about Africa as a continent. Oftentimes, you hear a lot of people speak about or refer to Africa like one country, that all of us belong to, or you sense the ignorance of a lot of people in the West, in the Americas or, the, or Europe, about the continent of Africa. The continent of Africa is composed of 54 sovereign nations, countries that speak diverse languages. And I think because of the lack of data that most people uh, lack of knowledge about the continent, it's often assumed that it's one place that uh, that uh, they can just visit, or if they visit Kenya or South Africa, it's more like they know about the whole of Africa. Oftentimes I've been asked, if I say, oh, I'm from Nigeria, oh, that's Africa, and I'll be asked references about things that when I digest, I was, okay, oh, you're probably referring to Kenya, or you're referring to South Africa, and you sense the ignorance in the person because he thought it's all the same thing, but Africa is very diverse. Now, let's see the different parts of Africa. One, North Africa, like this is mostly composed of Arabian speaking countries like Egypt, Algeria, Libya, Morocco, Western Sahara. They are often classified together with the Middle East uh, and called MENA, that is Middle East and not, not Africa. And most of the countries belong to the Arab League. Now, the next one is Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa are countries that are south, that are to the south of North Africa and composed like the, co composed of most of the countries within Africa. Now within Sub-Saharan Africa, we have West Africa, which includes Nigeria, where I'm from, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Niger Republic, Mali, Mauritania, and a host of other countries. Now, out of the 400 million people uh, in West Africa, Nigeria is composed of like 40 to 50 percent of that. And there are loads of languages that are spoken within West Africa. I personally speak Hausa, Yoruba, English, and a bit of Arabic. Now, then we have Central Africa. A lot of people hear quite a lot about the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo or South Sudan. There are lots of other countries within Central Africa. Then we have East Africa, Kenya, Mozambique, Madagascar, Somalia, Ethiopia, and so on. Then we have Southern Africa, with South Africa being the most prominent among the countries in Southern Africa. Now, these are the countries in Africa. So Africa is not Wakanda, it's not just one country, it's a huge continent with lots of countries. You can literally, I think the last time I traveled from Nigeria to South Africa, Cape Town, I, f I flew six hours to get to South Africa. So it's a very large continent. Now, to the main part of my talk, which is how do you improve your diversity initiatives in Africa. We've seen that Africa is a huge continent, more than a billion people, but how do you now craft or create these diversity initiatives to have impact on the continent? The first things are, what are your objectives from the first place? What are you trying to achieve? Is it just a publicity stunt so that the media will say, oh, this company is doing something in Africa or doing some diversity initiatives? Are you just interested in adding more numbers to the KPIs you're sharing for your stakeholders? Or are you creating some form of talent pipeline for your company and uh, creating more talents that you can recruit or bring into the industry? 
or are you trying to create visibility for your solution or your products that you are trying to sell? What you are trying to achieve goes a long way in defining the kind of result you will have from your, from, uh, from your diversity initiatives. It is very important for you to clearly research and define your objective, then set the right KPIs that you want to achieve. If it's just numbers, you can get numbers. You can, I've seen events or programs that are organized mainly for numbers. A ton of people show up, but at the end of the day, you don't see the impact. You don't see what exactly was the company trying to achieve. And everything boils down to, oh, they were probably just after the publicity. So it's important to get this right. Whatever you try aside this depends on your OKR. What is your objective? What is the key result you are looking for at the end of the day? And how do you identify that you've achieved this key result? What is the key performance indicator that you want to see from the initiatives you are trying to create? Now, the next thing is the diversity. You need to understand how diverse the continent is. We've seen language. Most of us are most of the continents that are used by uh, projects and initiatives is English. English is just a small part of the language spoken on the continent. I think it's around 13% or something. So it is important to understand that if your content is mailing in English, you are only reaching a subset of the continent. Then gender. Right from the beginning, your initiative should take into consideration how gender is perceived, how gender is handled, and how you can reach more. Taking into consideration that there is a lot of cultural differences even within a particular country. Then region. This is where a lot of countries get it wrong. You are doing an initiative, you call it, okay, let's say, for example, uh, white hat uh, hacking Africa, but all your speakers, all your focus, all the in your influencers and all the people you are, that are driving this initiative are based in Nigeria, or they are based in Kenya, or they are based in South Africa. You stand the risk of it just being in that country instead of being a continent-wide event one country against 53 other nations. So it is important for you to understand, okay, who are your audience? How do you intend to reach them? How can you effectively reach as many people as possible within the continent? You can probably make it a more regional event within Africa, like West Africa or East Africa or North Africa or Southern Africa because some of the countries within this region are kind of closely knit, closed knit and they tend to, uh, content tend, tend to circulate more within those regions than you just picking a specific region and expect the impact to radiate to the rest of the continent. It won't just work. Now, then to drill more into the language diversity. Like I was sharing earlier, 17% of the continent speaks Arabic and mostly in the northern part of Africa, which is like the top of uh, the, the, the top region, the northern region of Africa. 13% speak English. And this English are mostly official languages, not local languages. 11.5% speak French as official language. 10% speak Wahili, both as local and as official. Then 5% speak Hausa, most, mostly in uh, Western Africa. This is just like top 5%, uh, the top five of the languages that are spoken on the continent. There are thousands of other languages across different regions, but more, if you want to reach more people, these are the languages you need to focus on, not just English. So it is important that, for example, if you take Cameroon, Cameroon has the Anglophone part and the Francophone part. So if your content is mainly in English, you stand the risk of not reaching a whole lot of other people that might benefit from your content. And 
Anytime you are creating initiatives, it is important to also take note the different language barriers. Someone who speaks English might not be good at the English because it's probably a second or a third language. So it is important to take into consideration how people, the, the type of language people speak and how you can easily reach them. Now, the next thing is traveling. Traveling is hard within Africa and when you want to travel out of Africa. So a lot of sponsorship, I've seen a lot of sponsorship where, hey, we want uh, students to attend KubeCon, we are giving out free tickets, sponsorship tickets. But this ticket you are giving free is nothing compared to the amount of stress, the amount of money and so on that will be required for people to travel out of Africa. In Europe, it's easy to travel because it's it's cheaper. I, I've traveled less than 100 euro from one country to another within Europe. Within Africa, getting visa is a problem. I personally have been denied visa up to 10 times by different countries, the US, uh, within the EU and so on. It, there are countries I don't even bother any longer to even try to travel to because of my issues getting visa. But once I moved to Europe, things got a bit easier, but it's not everyone that can move to Europe. It's very expensive traveling out of Africa. For example, there was, uh, there was a time I, I did a bit of research and noticed it is, because I'm based in Nigeria, it is cheaper for me to travel Amsterdam, Abuja, Amsterdam, than to travel Abuja, Amsterdam, Abuja probably due to taxes, due to fuel and a lot of other things. So it is important to take all this into consideration. And also it can be very difficult to travel from one point in Africa to another. I've traveled to South Africa once where the only option I had was to use Emirates to travel to Dubai, then to Cape Town. I, I know of someone who wanted to uh, attend a conference and had to travel to Europe before getting to Africa. It's, uh, Niger is very close to Nigeria, but most times when I'm checking for flights that can travel to Niger, if I don't want to take the more than a day long trip, which can be really dangerous, it's only Air France that flies to Niger most times. So it's very, very difficult. So when you are creating your initiatives and you are looking at people moving around, take into consideration that it can be very hard to travel within Africa. Now, the next thing is, what, how do you intend to move this initiative along the way? When you start, okay, probably you are trying to get visibility for a technology or for a project. Where do new people start from? Then what's the next thing? How do they pipeline? How do they move along to learn different stages of this technology to, and evolve and grow within it? There has been several times where, in the name of empowerment, a lot of technologies are introduced to people. Let's say, for example, Android development. Most of the initiatives that get introduced, is, Android is introduced to people who probably have never used Java before, don't have very sound knowledge of computing, then you expect them to start building Android applications and to start shipping apps to the Play Store. Things have gotten better, but you stand the chance of losing a lot of people to, this is complex, this is hard. What sort of pipeline are you creating? Once someone learns Kubernetes, what's the next thing? What, are there mentorship for them? Are there uh, uh, ways they can get into project? How do they get into project? You want people to contribute to, the, uh, to, let's say, for example, the Kubernetes project. Where do they start from? Where do they evolve? Where do they get mentorship? Where do they access resources? It is important to be specific and to be, uh, to be specific with how you intend all these initiatives to introduce, to progress with people, not just to throw things at them and expect results. Now, the next thing is prioritize having remote or hybrid. One thing I've seen or I've learned from the recent lockdowns and pandemic is it is easier to reach more richer content, to get speakers, to get quality speakers, to get diverse speakers, to get 
lots of participants. If we look at uh, from the last physical events that was held for KubeCon to the KubeCon EU of 2020 to this that's happening, you will notice the surge in participants and speakers that are able to attend because the travel barrier is no longer there. And a whole lot of the visa issues, the visa limitations are no longer there. So more people are able to participate and engage. So it is important to prioritize remote or hybrid. Hybrid in the sense where probably you have viewing parties or where people can participate in or some clusters of events within different regions. This will make people where you have your diversity initiative to be able to contribute and participate more in whatever you are trying to do. The next thing is most initiatives tend to use influencers within a community, uh, especially in Africa, to reach more people or to push their content more. Yeah, it is extremely important and they can help in pushing down your resources or content down to the right people, but be cautious because sometimes a lot, we've seen a lot of situations where the product gets, or the initiative gets represented poorly or because the influencers have some different agendas or different initiatives that they are pursuing, or they might not represent what you are trying to achieve or the objectives or the policies that you or, uh, that, or the, um, the credits that you uh, have as a company or organization, they end up painting your initiatives in a bad light or creating a scenario where you have to now initiate some disaster control initiative. So be careful how you use influencers. Now, the next thing is partner with existing communities. There are communities who have built networks, who have built structures within the continent. For example, at the Google Developer Groups, they have uh, organizers in a lot of countries, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. For the, the Developer Students Club have organizers in schools all over Africa. Shekode Africa has a great initiatives for ladies and women all over Africa and so on. Oscar does a lot of awesome work around open source community in Africa. With the Facebook developer circle has a huge network of developers. So instead of starting your own initiatives right from the ground again, and it becomes more expensive to maintain and a huge overhead for you, you can partner with some of these organizations so that you can hit the ground running and move more faster than you having to look at the stress of starting your own initiative all over again. Next thing is understand the challenges that are inherent in Africa before demanding too much or before setting unrealistic expectations. One, internet is a huge problem. Yes, I'm in the Netherlands. I, my internet service is one gigabit per second. If that is a huge luxury, even for a company in Nigeria, if I will speak specifically for Nigeria, not to talk of an individual, there are times where you struggle to get kilobits per second. So anytime you are setting your expectations or setting anything that requires certain results, be reasonable in how you set those expectations because you know the internet is not as great as yours. And you can incentivize where necessary if you are working with people who are struggling with internet or enable them to be able to take advantage of hubs or communities by engaging with those communities, engaging with those hubs to enable your target audience. Not just expecting that, hey, your audience will have the resources to, to deploy Kubernetes or to build Docker images out of the blue or to download your one gigabit resources, one gigabyte resources that you've provided. Power is a problem, a huge problem. For example, in some parts of Africa, for example, like in Nigeria, where electricity is a huge problem. You can stay for days without power. So be mindful of when you are setting your expectation around the results to know that there can be power problem. People can face power issues. Security can be a challenge. While you should be mindful of what you see in media and what you read in the media, because one thing is a lot of Western media 
are, look, are based in their country. So they have a lot of news to focus on in their country and a small fraction of time to focus on news, international news from other regions. So they tend to highlight the negative or the those news that are important for their ratings instead of reporting some of the awesome and great things that are happening. So you tend to see a lot, a lot of bad and less good from the continent. There is a lot of awesome activities and programs that are happening within the continent. But if you are not looking, you won't see them. These are just to name a few of the challenges. Do your research. Work with the communities to understand what issues they are having before you set your expectation. The next thing is prioritize mentorship over events. A lot of communities want to focus on events. Ah, let's hold this, let's hold that. Instead, focus on mentorship. For example, like most of the CNCF projects have different mentorship at different levels for people who have been learning but want to actively engage with the community or contribute can start by learning from those who are already established within the community and grow. The next thing is showcasing your thought leadership on the continent. There are lots of people doing awesome things, but we tend to focus on those who are still trying to learn or those who don't have the knowledge yet instead of also highlighting and showcasing those who have already done great and awesome work for the community that way we even raise people to become mentors within the continent and to also be a role models for others within the continent to look up to instead of every time trying to come in and help the last thing is I want to talk about is there is a thin line between helping and unconscious savior mentality, which is a very huge problem we deal with in Africa. Most times people come with good intentions and they want to really create and support, but the way it is being presented or the way it is being offered is more about, hey, let's help these poor people who don't have anything, they, they, who are suffering, who are doing this and that. And it usually comes from not really studying and understanding the reality of situations on ground. So you end up wasting your resources because you had the wrong information, you don't have data, the right data to understand the situation of things on ground. You are not engaging with partners on ground. You think the same solutions that have worked with uh, American countries or uh, the European countries are still the same solutions that will work in Africa. At the end of the day, the whole initiative goes down the drain. So it is important for you to engage with partners to understand what is the situation on ground instead of just blindly creating an initiative and expect to get results. Listen, understand the audience. Don't just shove things down their throat. Set realistic goals and expectations. It's not like in the EU or the Americas where everything they have, there's this uh, type of, how do I put it, enabling environment that's already been created and makes it easy for other things to grow and start. So when you are not bringing your own initiative, they already have a good foundation to start on. In Africa, in some places in Africa, you really, you have to set the foundations yourself or build on certain foundations that have been created by some organizations, if only you asked. Then maintain a pipeline. What happens next from your initiative? When you introduce it at first, what's the next thing? Is it just to hold the event and that's all, it's gone? What's the next? Are you building some form of partnership? Are you building some form of uh, pipeline where you can get more talent, grow the talent, then take them into organizations or into projects? You need to clearly define that and make sure the pipeline is maintained and sustained. So these are the important things you need to really, really look into before pushing your initiative down. Understand the continent, know more about the continent, engage with reliable, reliable partners, not just anyone who has a good profile on Twitter. Verify their successes, work with other people too who have demonstrable results. Don't just go for online personas, people who really, really, really want to push things down to the continent. 
Understanding the diversity of the continent is extremely important and will go a long way in you achieving more success in whatever initiative you want to bring to the continent. Thank you very much. And I will be available for questions in the chat. And uh, uh, if you have more questions, you can reach me on Twitter at circuit 247 And more information about me is on my website. Thank you and goodbye.